Now introducing my next build, we have the Nether Engine. This steam engine is 100% netherproof, so you can take your ridiculous power gen and put it in the nether. This build does take advantage of a bug, so if you play on a server that disallows bug exploitation or are personally against it, then this build isn't for you. However, if your end goal is just to have fun, then absolutely this steam engine is perfect for you. Producing 281,568 free SU, you can finally rid yourself of all of your lava wheels and windmills. It does require a 13.5k startup, so I'm including a schematic of a simple windmill minecart contraption. Just jumpstart it with this, and then you're good to remove it. After the jumpstart, it is completely self-sufficient, just make sure it has the 12 bottles it needs. Size profile for this build is 11 long, 7 wide, and 8 tall. And that includes the lava gen supporting the blaze burners. I'm actually quite happy with how compact I was able to get this engine down to, so I hope you like it too. Now then, let's take a look at how it works. So the way this is working is we have three rows of lava generation by the dripstone lava mechanic, and in total we have 20 cauldrons. It would be 21, but I'm actually using this spot right here for a cogwheel. Lava is taken from the cauldrons when it's generated, and piped all the way over here to this pump right here. It is then pumped into this spout here, which fills a lava bucket which then drops down onto the depot for the mechanical arm to collect. That mechanical arm is sitting here behind the pump. The configuration for that mechanical arm is as shown here. It outputs an empty bucket onto this funnel here, and it takes a full lava bucket from this depot here. Those lava buckets are then deposited into the blaze burners, and that cycle is just going to keep on repeating itself. So in the current version of Create, when a deployer uses a water bottle on a cauldron, it fills up a certain amount. However, when a pump pulls the water from a cauldron, no matter what fill state it's on, it will pull out a full buckets of water worth. So instead of pulling out 250 to match the actual input, you pull out an entire bucket. So you've gained 750 in total. So that is three buckets there, three buckets there, and only a bucket and a half is used to refill these six spots here. I actually don't know if the Create Mod developers know about this bug, but if this video gets popular enough, they'll certainly find out. So what we have going on here is that we have empty glass jars being filled with water from these spouts. The mechanical arm is going to take these full water bottles from the depots here and place them in the hands of the deployers here. And I have one mechanical arm for three deployers for a total of 12 deployers and 4 mechanical arms. Those deployers then empty the water bottles into the cauldrons. The empty water bottles get pulled out of the deployers and back onto the depot for the cycle to repeat itself. And the water is pumped into this fluid tank right here, which then refeeds the spouts and the excess goes into the steam boiler to sustain it. Steam engine power gets collected into this encased chain drive, with part of it being used to feed this rotation speed controller to make sure all of the pumps run at the 180 that they need to supply the steam engine. As for the remaining power, that's up for you to decide. To fill up your lava bin, you are going to need 20 buckets of lava in total. Next up, you're going to need to put bottles down on each of your depots here, and it doesn't matter what order you do this in, but I do recommend putting down one bottle on each of the three depot sections. And of course, you're going to go ahead and repeat that on the other side, and then you'll want to take an empty bucket and set it right down here on this depot. As for your filters, you want to set each of your brass funnels to be an empty glass bottle. If you're using the schematic cannon, your deployers should come already filtered, but just make sure that each of them are showing the water bottle. If you're using schematic cannon, your mechanical arm should come pre-programmed, but just in case that you need to break it and replace it, here's the configuration. And that mechanical arm is going to go behind the depot, behind the pump, right there. And as I demonstrated, the easiest way to make sure that the rotation of the pump is correct is to break that depot and then just flip it as needed. You want to make sure it's going up. Whatever orientation these mechanical pumps are, they're probably going to be wrong, so expect to need to flip these when you actually get it running. That goes for this side too. Be aware that these will probably not be in the right direction. Other than the mechanical pump's rotation, you shouldn't need to bother with rotating anything else. As for the bottom section, we have your pipes and your cauldrons. I actually recommend breaking each of your 12 cauldrons on the bottom here, and then removing the casing on each of these fluid pipes. Then you can go ahead and replace your casings, as well as your cauldrons. Doing that is just a quick little measure that you can do to help make sure everything runs smoothly. Now then, let's go ahead and show you the minecart contraption and how to jumpstart it. So we're just going to need to set down our vertical gearbox here, and then set down six shafts. 
At the end of those shafts, set down three cobblestone blocks, like so. Break the top two and set down a rail. Set down a cart assembler and a lever below it on the block. Once you set down this minecart contraption, it'll turn into a block form, which will immediately start working to power the steam engine. Now that it's getting power, go ahead and check to make sure all your mechanical pumps are facing the right way. And after a couple minutes of leaving it be, you should be good to break the vertical gearbox here and it should be completely self-sufficient at this point. When you're ready to take back your contraption, just go ahead and break your shafts, flip the lever, and then take your cart back. Then you can disassemble the rest of the machine. And there we have it, a completely self-sufficient, nether-proof steam engine. If you like this video, I would appreciate if you would like the video. And if you're enjoying my channel, I would appreciate a subscribe. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those in the description, or you can join my Discord, which I have linked in my bio. Thank you for watching.